All right, Japanese companies, try not to do horrendously pedophilic nonsense and act like it's normal challenge. Let's go. Ah, you gotta be fucking kidding me. So here's the story if you don't know. The author of Ruroni Kenshin, Nobuhiro Watsuki, was arrested a while back with over 100 DVDs of a uh, piled chorn, if you know what I mean. So much that the authorities thought he was distributing it. I mean, that's pretty terrible, right? Surely his career was over. No, of course it's not. You knew that. That's why you clicked on the video. He got fined. He got a little slap on the ass. I mean, wrist. And then he was back to his old job in no time. I mean, just think about that for a second, right? Like, just imagine you're at your job and your coworker disappears for a while, like six months to a year or so, right? And then they come back and you find out that this is what they did. How are you supposed to work with that person or at that place without losing your mind? And on top of that, your boss expects you to congratulate him for his return to work because everybody just loves and respects his contributions to the team and the company so much. Wouldn't that be insane? That would be insane, right? And just to add another layer of insanity to this real life Monty Python sketch, you work at a company called Shonen Jump. Shonen literally means young boys. <laughs> Hopefully that put into perspective how insane it is that this happened, but that's actually old news. The reason we're talking about this now is because Jump is celebrating his return and for the 30th anniversary of Ruroni Kenshin, a bunch of authors from Shonen Jump are contributing to this like congratulations illustration. And the Roroni Kenshin anime remake is coming back again because not only did he get his job back, apparently that's not even enough to like not remake his work like immediately after and i'm not here to say that you know this guy sucks i think that's pretty obvious i hope i mostly want to talk about how disappointed i am in all of these other names of like authors who are not hopefully piled chorn enthusiasts who signed off on this like my goat araki after the amount of times that i watched pedos get their shit knocked out in jojos he does this I want to explain why I'm legitimately disappointed by this and also try to address some of the common justifications and counter arguments that you will probably hear on this topic on the internet. There's two things here. Number one, separate the art from the artist. And number two, don't be a fucking gaijin westerner who comes in here and tries to apply your stupid woke standards to Japanese culture. I'm exaggerating, but only a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's talk about separating the art from the artist. Rurouni Kenshin is a classic. Nobody would deny that. I have fond memories of watching it from when I was a kid. And if you're pushing 30 or older, my condolences, but also you probably remember that too. I think it's totally reasonable to be a fan of the story or have some sort of emotional attachment to the story because it's art. That's what it's for, right? But there are limits to separating the art from the artist. Like, yeah, stories and art are valuable because we form an emotional connection to that. But once you hit a certain threshold of just depravity, is it really possible for that to like have zero effect on your emotional connection to the artwork that was created? Good art is personal. It's authentic. That's what separates it from all this AI slop that we see everywhere on the internet right now. So if it's personal, then surely you can't 100% separate it from the person who made it. Now, I'm not telling you what to like and what not to like. Everyone has their own line. I'm just saying there is a line and it's got to be somewhere before this, right? <laughs> the bigger issue around this conversation is supporting the person who made the art. Because even if you recognize the story and the influence of Ruoni Kenshin, there's no way you can justify directly supporting the guy who made it because he's the guy who committed the crimes. He's still out there making money. He's still out there getting to do press tours and being a somewhat celebrity, getting supported by his peers, getting mainstream adaptations of his work. Even though Ruroni Kenshin is a great story, why the hell is this guy being let off the hook? There's no justifying that. And that is the issue, because even if you respect his creation, by showing him support, you are financially rewarding him. Especially if you're a huge name like Oda or Kishimoto. 
You can bet that there's a direct correlation between them showing their support to him and the financial benefits that he gets and the level of reintegration to society that he can have. That's probably why they were told to do this in the first place, because their names have influence. There are not many better ways to signal that someone is cool than by having their most respected peers give them a cosign. Hey, let's imagine the opposite, right? Imagine Oda came out and was like, actually, this guy is whack and I don't fuck with him. What do you think happens to his career? So yeah, you can separate the art from the artist. That's fine. Enjoy Ruroni Kenshin if you really want to. But in terms of supporting the artists themselves, especially publicly supporting them, especially putting your name behind them, that's a different conversation entirely. And I don't think separating the art from the artist applies. You can't justify that. So with that said, let's talk about the second point, which I think is a little bit more nuanced, and that's culture. Hey, listen up, wokey. Don't bring your Western woke mind virus to our glorious land of the rising sun, Japan. Jokes aside, cultural differences are a very real thing, and we do need to be sensitive to them. So let's establish some context here. Number one, in Japan, the relationship between peers and mentors is much more important than it is here, and you can even trace it back to the samurai culture of Bushido, maybe even further than that. Because I doubt the first samurai just like came out of the womb understanding the code of honor. I'm not an anthropologist, so I'm not even going to touch that. But I do think it's safe to say that there's a sense of loyalty ingrained in their culture that is significantly different and noticeable compared to the Western sense of individualism. It is a form of collectivism where the group is more important than the individual. No, not like that. Unlike that, there's still a strong belief in class and social hierarchy, but it works to an extent because there is genuinely a belief that every level of the social hierarchy is deserving of honor and respect. Not always the case in Western countries, and not necessarily a bad thing either. For example, even Japanese CEOs like Nintendo's Satoru Iwata took a pay cut back in 2014 to avoid laying people off. Just imagine for a second, an American CEO doing that. They would probably get called a communist on national TV within 30 seconds. They'd have all the psychos on the Finance Pro channels calling for their heads because they're destroying the free market. So yeah, loyalty is more of a thing there than here. And even people in power believe in it to some extent. But what happens when that concept of loyalty compels you to support someone who's done unspeakable things that you completely cannot accept. It's not just culture, it's also the big wigs and bosses at your company who are seeing dollar signs and being like, hey, you should support this guy because he's gonna make us money. And whatever makes us money is good for you. you take all that and the social expectation of loyalty, which by the way is actually personal for some of these guys, like Oda was his assistant at one point in time. And you can see how this becomes a bit of a social dilemma. Now on the flip side of culture, there are people who will just hand wave anything bad that happens in Japan and just be like, yeah, Japan's just full of pedos. What do you mean? It's their culture. Again, it is true that there is a problem with sexual harassment in Japan to the point where their subways have like women only trains because women just get groped so much. That's pretty dystopian, right? And if you've watched more than like five anime in your life, you've probably noticed a little weirdness about how they depict minors sometimes. Talk about lolis and shotas like it's a normal thing. So yeah, it's valid to point those things out. But people also look at limited information and go way too far and talk about Japan like it's this foreign alternate upside down dimension. Like you could slap a Sakura filter on a picture of anywhere in Japan and all of a sudden everything you know about humans no longer applies. Like no, there's still people. There is an immense amount of diversity of thought and opinion and microcultures across this country of over 120 million people. I'm trying to be very sensitive here because I understand how it feels when Westerners come in and just make ignorant blanket statements about huge groups of people without any understanding of the nuance or knowing anything about the culture beyond two or three things that they saw in pop culture. But being sensitive to cultural differences does not mean accepting everything. So you can't hand wave Japanese culture and just say, ah, oh, yeah, it's uniformly this or it's uniformly that. It's just all about loyalty there, so you can't judge or it's all about pedophiles, so I'm not surprised. There are so many variables here, you can't just reduce it to one thing. 
And let me give you some perspective with a counterexample. In Hollywood, there is a director named Roman Polanski. Many of you may have heard of him, but he was convicted of literally raping a 13-year-old girl. And after that, he still got a standing ovation at the Oscars. Now, I believe that situation has very little to do with the average American. And I would not group every single American in with that specific situation just because of their culture or whatever. So, yeah, let's have some perspective when we talk about culture here. So what's the point here? We just can't have an opinion? Can I have an opinion or not? You can always have an opinion, all right? I think we can all agree this guy should not have been allowed to re-enter society so easily. And for fucking sure, should not be celebrated by the most respected people in his industry just because he wrote a good story. At the same time though, as foreign fans, we have to understand that we are missing a lot of cultural context and we're not the target audience and making blanket generalized statements can do more harm than good. But speaking strictly about this situation and the general depiction of pedo shit and anime and manga, there are some weird and concerning trends that we should talk about. Again, I'm not telling anyone that they can't enjoy or respect Roni Kenshin or even that our opinions are more important than the opinions of people in Japan. But anime and manga are global now, so we, as the global audience, are still allowed to look at a situation and be like, yo, that's, uh, that's kind of fucked up. And you can and should be disappointed if your favorite manga authors are in this list. God damn it, Araki. Why did you do this? You're not even in Shonen Jump anymore. At the end of the day, cultural differences being what they are, Japan is not an alternate dimension. They're a lot more similar to everyone else than they are different. And you can bet that anything you might feel is also felt by a significant number of people there, even if they're not the majority. You don't have to speak over other people and speak over their culture like you know more than them, but you can still share your disappointment. And this isn't some woke, cancel culture or whatever other buzzword people are using now. This dude is an actual child predator. He's not even innocent till proven guilty. He's guilty. <laughs> he did that shit. On Diddy, bro, he did that shit. Like imagine a bunch of rappers came out now and we're like, you know, Diddy, super chill guy. I really respect his contributions to our industry when bro is literally Satan. This is, this is crazy, it's crazy. There are definitely Japanese people who saw that and were like, yo, that's kind of fucked up. This is the same thing, right? Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it wasn't too rambly. I don't have the answers, but I do have the questions. And if you like that, feel free to drop a like, feel free to subscribe, feel free to drop a comment. Even if it's to tell me that my video is bad, I still want to hear your opinion. And with that said, I'll see you all next time.